A friend of the family, Angela Lago, contacted me about making a pen for her husband for a belated Father's Day gift. So we were speaking on the phone, sending some images back and forth, and this is the blank that we came up with. This is a gorgeous Kenneth Wines laser cut blank. The rubber bands are on there for a very good reason. If I take them off, this blank will come apart. There's a dowel up the center that Kenneth uses to assemble the blanks, and you can see that'll slide right out, and we will replace that with the tube from our kit. Now, Kenneth is retiring. He's getting out of the business. Rick Cobb has purchased all of his plans and will be selling his laser cut blanks going forward. There's his number and his email address. He has an e-commerce site that's in process of being built. It's not ready yet, so if you're interested in seeing any of these amazing laser cut blanks, please contact Rick. For this, we are gonna use an Elegant Monarch Joshua Band Gun Polish and Pewter pin kit from the Classic Nib. Now you know I love the Monarchs and you know I love Classic Nib. I'm not gonna take this out of the bag just yet because I don't wanna take a chance of damaging any of the parts. You'll get a better look at this during assembly. Let's get started putting this blank onto a tube. Anytime you turn one of these laser cut blanks, you wanna make sure you prepare your tubes properly. You can see I've scuffed the tube liberally. I went ahead and did a second tube as a backup just in case there are any issues. I wanna keep the paint out of the end of the tube because that will change the diameter and make it more difficult to press our components in. So using a little Play-Doh, I plugged the end of the tube. I then drove a nail into a scrap piece of wood and we'll hang our tubes. I've got some black enamel paint and we're gonna take this out in the yard. We'll get both tubes sprayed black and once they're dry, we'll get them glued into the blank. I've got my tubes painted. They turned out really nice. As I look at them, there are no runs, which is what I was worried about. That's one of the reasons why I went ahead and prepared two tubes uh, in the event that I got the paint on a little too thick uh, because you know as well as I do, when the paint is thick, the uh, tube is not going to fit inside the blank quite as nicely. We have nice, even light coats. And I don't know if anybody noticed this or not, but you see that right there? The initial can of paint that I had had a beautiful black lid on it, but on the center of that lid, it described it as sapphire blue. So we almost had blue tubes. Luckily, I did a test shot before I painted the tubes and I was able to quickly switch gears, grab a can of flat black and uh, make everything perfect. The paint on my tube has had plenty of time to dry and we're ready now to swap the dowel rod for the tube. This one should be fairly easy. I'm just gonna slide it right in from the end. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center the tube between the two ends and we're gonna saturate this with thin CA. This is my down and dirty paint jig that I made to paint the tubes, and it turns out it's gonna be great for uh, saturating the blanks with CA. Just let it roll around on there a little bit. Let's get the back side. I'm being careful to get it up to the edges, but I don't want it to run over the edges and get inside of the tube. Just gonna use this little tool here to roll the blank over and we'll get some on the other side. I've got cardboard under this for obvious reasons. I don't wanna coat my table with CA glue. And I am not gonna use activator on this. Um, I'm just gonna let it sit and dry naturally. A little bit out here on the end. And I'm gonna make sure the entire blank is wet. Looks pretty good to me. All right, we're just gonna let this set and dry. And when it's done drying, we'll be ready to turn. I let the glue dry on the blank overnight. I did not want to use any activator and rush the process. I'm just taking my time and hopefully uh, going to be able to do a really nice job with this blank. Uh, the rubber bands are obviously glued to the blank. They're solid now as a rock, uh, but they'll just turn away just like the wood. I've got my skew sharpened and we're ready to start turning.
wanted to take a look at the blank, make sure everything was going well. So far, so good. Just got to be real careful with this one, but uh, I think it's going to turn really nicely. Taking a look at the blank, it turned really nice. I'm always nervous when I do these because they are so delicate and uh, just the slightest miscut with the tool and uh, you can destroy them. But we are right down to the bushings. I mean, I might feel a tiniest little maybe paper thick lip on that side, about the same on this side. But uh, as we sand, that'll disappear. This will come right down to the bushings and we should have a beautiful fit with the components of our pen. I was turning at about 2,600 RPMs. I've dropped the lathe speed down to 800 RPMs, and we're gonna sand. You've seen me use this technique before. I use a blank with a nice flat edge, and uh, I use that on the very first grid of sandpaper, and what that allows me to do is work any tool marks out of the blank. Some of the tool marks are very, very fine, and what happens is, uh, if you don't get them out of the blank, they'll reflect the light in an odd manner and it will catch your eye. You won't really see it, but you will kind of see it. The blank won't look its best. So I like to work this blank this covered with sandpaper until all of the, the shiny rings are gone from the blank. That's how you know you've removed the tool marks because the tool marks go below the surface of the blank and the scuffed up area will be the surface. We're looking pretty good. Okay, now what we wanna do is, uh, since I worked it with, this is 120 grit sandpaper, there's a few little scratches going around the blank, centrifugal scratches. I'm just gonna lightly scuff the blank from end to end. And what this will do is get rid of those deep centrifugal scratches. And then we'll come back with our 220 sandpaper and uh, sand normally. We don't need to use the blank any longer. Let's take a look at that. Always inspect your blank closely for scratches. Okay, she looks pretty good. I'm gonna run through the rest of the grits of sandpaper. We're gonna go up to uh, 600. Uh, I'll come back and show you the blank right before I start to apply a finish. I finished sanding and I've gone ahead and swapped out my turning bushings for my non-stick bushings. And we're gonna use a little denatured alcohol and we're gonna wipe the dust off our blank. Wanna clean it as best as we can so we get the nicest finish possible. You can kind of get a hint for what the blank's going to look like when it's shined up with the denatured alcohol. Looks like there's a little zebra wood in there. I see some paduke, some uh, purple heart, maybe a little yellow heart. I'm not sure how many woods are in there. Maybe six, seven different woods. Really is a beautiful blank. Once you clean the blank with denatured alcohol, you do not want to touch it. So I'm just going to use an acetate brush and knock down any fuzzies from the paper towel because we don't want those in the CA finish. Normally when I finish my blanks, I use five coats of thin and five coats of medium, but these laser cut blanks, um, because they are multiple pieces, it's like a very deep grain sometimes. So I anticipate needing a few more coats of medium CA. Look how that looks, isn't it beautiful? I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera off. We'll apply the rest of our thin. I'll then apply five coats of medium. We'll go ahead and micro mesh, and then we will closely inspect the blank uh, to make sure we have a nice smooth surface, and we'll apply additional coats of CA if needed. I will show you the blank when the CA is finished, uh, right before I go to the micro mesh, and we'll talk through any, any concerns that we have about the finish. I've got five coats of thin and five coats of medium on the blank. I'm just rotating it and watching the reflection across the top of the blank. 
uh, and that reflection will show me if there's any grain that was deep and I need to put another layer of CA on there, uh, or if there's any gaps between the pieces of wood, uh, which they're pretty tight, but if there were, that could cause me to need a little more CA. All in all, I'm not seeing anything. It looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get it off of the nonstick bushings. We'll clean the ends up, get it back on the turning bushings, and then we're gonna micro mesh it and uh, we'll take a closer look at it once it's micro meshed. Gonna head over to the sander and clean that CA glue fingernail off each end. With the ends of the blank cleaned off, I went ahead and put it back on the turning bushings because as we micro mesh, we wanna make sure we micro mesh right down to the bushing. I've got nine pads that we're gonna run through. We will use water with these pads and we'll wipe off the slurry between each pad. I'll go ahead and start the first pad, show you what it looks like, and then we'll shut the camera off to finish up. I'm still running at about 840 RPMs. You'll notice that the pad is wet and I'm gonna count about 20 seconds. That's probably about eight, nine, 1,000, 10, 1,000. And then we'll wipe the slurry. I'll go ahead and continue with the rest of the pads and we will come back in a few minutes and show you what the blank looks like. We have a gorgeous glass-like finish on our blank. I'm just turning really slowly. I can see a slight little indention right there Rolling the blank over, looking for anything else. That's just one little, there's one right there, a little divot, and what they are, they're right where two pieces of wood meet, so it must have been a little deeper there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is apply, let's say two more coats of CA, and then I'll micro mesh again, and we'll reinspect the blank. I'm gonna use medium CA for these last two coats. Not a great deal of it, just enough to kind of level it. I'll let that dry and then we'll add a second coat. I just finished micro meshing after the last two coats of CA. I only micro meshed for 15 seconds per pad this time because I only had two coats of uh, CA on the blank and the idea was to take it back down as close to the original layer as possible um, and that will fill the, uh, the two little divot marks I found. And as I'm rotating the blank and watching the line, this blank is just gorgeous. I have a glass-like finish and the blank looks beautiful. Let's uh, get it to the assembly table and get this assembled into a kit. Actually, let's put some Renaissance wax on here and let's buff this up on the buffing wheels, then we'll hit the assembly table. Just gonna work the wax in with my finger. You've seen me do it a hundred times. I work the wax until I can start filling the blank, start to tug on the skin of my finger. Uh, the nice thing about using your finger is there is no um, friction there or no uh, grit like a piece of sandpaper or a, a, a towel, paper towel, has like a grit to it, maybe 20,000 on the towel. Uh, there is no grit in your finger, so you're not going to scratch your blank. I can feel it starting to tug, especially down at this end. And I think we are ready to go to the buffing release. I went ahead and put my blank onto a mandrel so that I can hold it. Uh, otherwise, the blank is kind of small. It could get pulled out of your hands by the wheels. They will be spinning at 1100 RPMs. Uh, we're gonna use this blank to work the wax in and this blank to take the wax off and buff it, buff the blank up. Flannel, cotton. Just gonna roll it on the wheel. Make sure I get all the way around the blank and we'll slowly move the blank up on the wheel to make sure we cover the entire surface. The light is not the best over on this side of the shop. 
but in a minute you're going to see just how this blank pops. Let me start off by giving you a little better look at this blank. Isn't that gorgeous? Just look at that shine. What a beautiful blank. One thing I want to do is these are very thin when you get done turning them. I don't want to have any CA glue in the ends of my blank that could uh, make it difficult for me to press a component in and could potentially uh, cause the blank or the tube to deform and split the blank. So I'm just using a deburring tool and now we're ready to assemble our pin. I've already slid the cap onto the clip and I've already put the transmission sleeve onto the nib. What we're gonna do is grab one of our bushings. We'll slide that into the back of our blank or the front actually. We're gonna grab the cap to our pin and we're very carefully gonna press the cap into the blank. There we go. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Whoops, dropped the bushing. Take a look at that. We have got a gorgeous fit between that blank and that cap. Take the front half of our pin. The spring is already on the refill. There's a little ball on there we're gonna remove. I'll drop that into the nib. We'll add the transmission. Let's twist it a couple of times just to get the grease working. There we go, nice and smooth. And I always hate touching the transmission because there's a little grease on it and I get my fingerprints all over the pin which doesn't make it look as nice. But take a look at that, isn't that a beauty? Look at the fit that we have down around that nib. No gaps, nice smooth transition. That is one gorgeous pin. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight. I'd also like to say thank you to Angie for uh, asking me to turn this gorgeous pin uh, for her husband as a belated Father's Day gift. I really think he's gonna like it. I can't wait to put it in her hands and let her see what she thinks of it. Uh, I'm super happy with how this pin turned out. Once again, thank you for joining me in the shop. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.